Hello everyone, Luke Swan here. I wanted to do a quick tutorial on coloring basics for comics. Without further ado, I guess I'll just get into it. So I'm going to color this panel real quick. Just kind of talk about what I'm doing while I do it, and I'll try and make it quick. So I'm not going to go over every aspect of coloring, but just sort of the basics to kind of get you started. Whenever I color anything, the first question I always ask is, what is the tone or the mood that I want to set for my image? For this, it's like an outdoor scene, nice sunny day, so I might go with an aqua. Notice that this is kind of a medium. It's not too bright. It's not too dark. I like the mid-range tone because we're going to be using it to sort of build up our lights concept of painting that I like to do is light on to dark base coats. The first thing is tone is really interesting, right? So once you pick your base color, that's going to set the tone for the rest of your image. This is a nice sunny day, but let's say if I want to do like a nice autumn dusk kind of thing, I might pick something like this sort of a sunset kind of dealio or if you wanted to do like a night surfing scene I might do that that's a little too saturated I might pick something a little less you know something really deep like this you can build your lights off and you're gonna get like a lot of contrast in your image and it's gonna be sweet right but for the purpose of this we're gonna go with a nice sunny day now that your tone is set you're ready to go I won't get too much into workflow on this um, some people like to use a lot of layers and sort of build things up that way and if you want to make a lot of changes and stuff that I would recommend doing that. I personally almost always work on just one or two layers. Uh, I guess I'm just too lazy and I don't like having too many layers going on. It kind of slows computer performance down. Now that I got this going on here, I like to build my colors up and work sort of back to front. So first I might take like a lighter version of this. That's pretty light, but we'll, we'll go with it and I'll just kind of go in and sort of just lightly dust this and then I can you can use your eyedropper tool to find a medium sort of color wood and I'm just kind of lightening this horizon line a little bit here right now might be a good time to sort of take that color again and like I said we're working back to front so I'm starting way in the background and I'm building the clouds and I like to start with a big brush work in broad strokes. I may like rescale a little bit using my hotkeys. If you're in Photoshop, it's your bracket keys. I'm using MetaBang. It's actually the same in MetaBang. It's bracket keys. So I'm just going to build up these clouds here real quick. And I don't really worry too much about staying inside the lines. Obviously, you want to try stay inside the lines a little bit, but it's not super important. Coffee. So good. Need the caffeine right now. All right. So now let's see here. Throw in like a color for the sun. there and very lightly painting some fall off almost white to build up the brightness of it and now I might take this almost white and just sort of trim the high line of the clouds so while I'm doing this I'm always thinking about where's my light coming from and what's that going to hit when you have your base color down that works as your medium tone or your shadow layer for a lot of things what you're doing is you want to paint the light on in the direction that it's coming from and you always want some of that base color to shine through in different parts of your painting. So something like that looks pretty nice. You know, I don't want to get too, too deep into it. And now I might come in here a little bit with my eyedropper tool and just sort of eyedrop one of these sort of medium yellow tones. Soften this glow up a tad. Here we have like a concrete wall and a tree line to work with. So I'm going to grab a, a tree line swatch and you can see this is super dark. It's kind of in the distance so I'm, I want to create a sense of distance here and I don't want to use a really punchy green for the trees. Lay down like a couple strokes at a lighter opacity and then eyedropper that if your base color is strong, right? By doing this, you're making sure that you get some of that background color sort of mixed into your uh, base coat. And then now we'll just go in and here I'm sort of considering uh, water properties as well because this water here is kind of blocking off the trees, but water is translucent in nature. So we're going to want the green from the trees to maybe shine through eventually at some point. So maybe I'll color it all the way over there. Keep running it down. As we start to go further and further away, I might start using lighter and lighter strokes on my trees, and I might even eyedropper this a bit just to kind of get a nice lighter tone that I'm working with. Now, this is green, right? This is green. When you see it, so your mind tells you it's green, but if you actually look at the color value, the swatch, we're, we're working with a blue, but because it's sort of contrasted enough, plus your mind's eye telling you that those are trees and that they're green, they automatically look green, even though their true color may not necessarily be green per se, right? So I'm just going to keep going nice and sort of simple. Let me grab our little sun color up here, boom, and line these guys a little bit. I'm just going to kind of go through 
I'm gonna do this real quick. And you'll notice like I, I I'm using this color here, and when you're putting it on these more foregroundy trees here, there's more contrast to work with. So the yellow kind of shows up more where back here there's a lot less contrast going on. And that's okay. We can just allow that to happen, you know. Because awesomeness. Now we gotta find a good concrete wall color, so like that gray there, like that. And again, we're just gonna go back and just apply a dropper, mix the color up a bit, and boom. That's probably good for what we're doing. I got a lot of questions about water. Water is a little bit of a, you know, it's a different thing. There's elements going on in water that's really interesting. First is water is transparent or translucent, right? Which means light passes through it, but it still has its own color. And the more water that you're working with, the deeper and deeper the color gets. Also, where the water gets thin, it gets a lot of light passes through it, and you can kind of see through it. Those are all sort of things to consider. So what I might do with my water here is I'll take a deep, dark base coat. Metabang blends automatically when you're writing in, so it's actually a lighter color automatically blending with my blue. But we'll just go in here, and we'll just start to paint. You can see the grain of the water, the way that it's flowing, and I usually try and match my strokes to that grain so that we're flowing with it. And I might color all the way through the top, and I'm going to leave some of that sky color in here towards the top because the water is getting thinner. And then at the bottom, a you know, thick, dark ocean, I might just try and drown out as much of that base coat as I can. Up until we get further away, it can be a little bit lighter back there because of distance. And now we'll kind of go in and you see how you can see a little bit of the color of the trees and the walls behind it. Real nice. Building up the flow. I know I usually work back to front, but a lot of times I paint the characters last if I'm doing a comic. Or anything. The way I like to draw attention to the characters and stuff, their colors tend to be a little bit punchier because you want them to stand out in the scene more. Okay, so here we go. This serves as the base coat for the water. You may say, like, surfing, it's it's not super bright blue, whatever, and like, well, if this was Hawaii or the Mentalize or someplace like that, I might use, like, a brighter color, but this is Japan, and the ocean in Japan is kind of dark. There you go, you have your buildup, and over here, I might even lay it down a little bit thicker, because the closer to the viewer you get, the more contrast there's going to be, and so you want your dark darks here, and then it kind of gradually gets lighter as we go down. Next, I'll pick my next color, this nice emerald green here. And this is going to be sort of the surface color of the water. So as you're looking in the ocean, the water is like deep dark blue, but then as you start to get to the surface where the light shines, there's kind of a layer of translucency, and that's where you might see a little bit more color variation in what's going on. So what I'm doing is when I do the base coat, I'm thinking of what does the water look like deep down underneath. This is the layer where the light hits the surface of the water. And I already made these sort of grain marks here, and and I'm just kind of creating some interesting water flowy kind of patterns. I'm starting to use a smaller brush size here just because we're getting into more refined detail. I think I want a little bit more presence of this green up towards the top of this splash area here where the water is going to be thinner and we're going to get more of that seawater coloring, but just lightly because we're going to go over this again with a brighter color. I'm going to keep going through here, creating our flow. Maybe it's like really far away at this point, maybe a little bit more green in it so there's less of that contrast going on. Boom. So yeah, something like this maybe. And then I might go through again just with a slightly bigger brush and just kind of in broader strokes just glaze some of this over just a tad. Smooth it out just a little bit. Now, I mean, it's important to work quickly because I usually only have like four hours or so to make a comic book page. So I have to make decisions pretty quickly. There's not a whole lot of time to tinker with stuff, so you kind of want to get good at making good decisions quickly, right? Here we go. That's looking okay. I'll just maybe go in and fill in some of these splashes here. Here I might actually eyedropper it so it's a little bit lighter. Try and get a little bit more of that sky color to shine through. There we go. So, now we have this, it's starting to look a little bit more watery. Now, I want to add one more sort of top layer of surf, not specular highlights in terms of white point and things like that, but it's subspecular. I don't even know if that's a word, but I like to call it subspecular highlight. Create a little bit more contrast and variance in the ripples of the water. We're going to start to see this water kind of 
pop a little bit here. Going in. And here, like multiple strokes, it layers it up so it gets brighter and brighter. I might actually create a split peak there. I don't have to do anything super crazy or refined. It is a comic, it is cartoon. We're going for stylized, not super realistic water. Then as we get further away, I might just go a little bit bigger. Again, it's sunny, so we're probably going to want this brighter value here. If you're imagining, again, our light source, the sun's hitting it there, so it's going to be nice and bright. Flow over here and see deeper. So we'll just... We can even create extra ripples in the water just with the paint. Actually, I don't like that one, but I did like that other one. You okay. just create extra ripples with the paint. I think that looks pretty good. And then I just kind of lightly go Baroque Aperta Nice. Then uh, we have a, what I call my secondary wave light color. This is where the water is really thin. And because the Japan Sea, ocean water is like really complicated. There's a multitude of colors. And depending on how the light hits it and the time of day and everything that's going on, it can change colors dramatic, dramatically. Dramatic, dramatic dramatically and um, yeah it's pretty neat so you have to think there's a multitude of colors there's usually two or three different shades of whatever you got going on happening there and it's it's important to know when to use them and stuff so I have this really light color and I generally use this where sunlight contact on the really really thin stuff and go in and just kind of line the top of this wave here like that go through and what we really want is to kind of get this. I like these little loops I make where we kind of let the shadow go through. It sort of gives the splash a, a sense of light bending around it. Again, it's probably not perfectly accurate, and I'm probably going to end up redoing some of this once I actually paint Joe. But uh, create believability, I think, is what is is what you're really going for here. I think it was um, Chuck Jones said that I'm going to totally butcher this quote. He was never striving for real. He was just striving for believable. And that's basically what I'm doing here. I want this water to be believable but not necessarily realistic. Realistically it probably doesn't move too much like that but it looks like some fashion in which water might move. So then we're just kind of going through here and creating a little bit of light breakage. Going around the edges creating a sense of volume and throw a little bit of light here in these guys. Now these water splashes in the background look pretty cool but I think I overdid it a little bit with the dark green base coat a little while ago and I want to go back and put in a little bit more sense of transparency because it's supposed to be more of a thin splash and right now the water is looking a little thick so I might go back and actually just pull out my original sky color there and just kind of go in and I might even go a little bit brighter than the original sky color. Let's try that. Try and get a little bit more of that transparency transparency back into it there. Now, I mean, ideally what you do is you just don't paint the places that you want the light to shine through, but sometimes mistakes happen. It's kind of a magic feeling when you do it without painting it in. I can tell just by looking at this, it feels like I put strokes into it and then it doesn't quite look like it would if I just left some of that space open for the background color to shine through. This magical trick that happens when you do it. Sometimes you nail it, sometimes you don't. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I think this water is probably pretty close to good to go for now. We'll get back to that a little bit later. Let's go paint Joe. Even though he's not full of water, he's in the water, he's going to have an effect on the water. So first thing I do is wetsuit. I have a swatch. I have a swatches for a lot of my stuff right now. You sort of build them up over time as you color stuff. And what I like to do with the wetsuits because a lot of times they are wet, so I will kind of make them dark in the middle and then sort of leave a little bit of gap here where, again, the color shining through. And that's just to sort of give the suit a sense of reflective quality from being shiny and wet, you know? I'm trying to paint around this. Maybe in this case it would have been better to just sort of do the flats on Joe's wetsuit first before diving into the water because he's kind of in it and now I'm finding myself working around these splashes a bit but we'll see what happens sometimes I just like screw it and I'll just go over stuff and just be like I'll paint it again so we get that wetsuit in here huh and this is just the wetsuit base coat so now what we're gonna do that we have this base coat in is we're just gonna go and I'm coloring in this wetsuit but I'm gonna put a few streaks in there just to make it look like water and then grab some of this and just now that's done, and then I got to color his boogie board. I don't have a boogie board swatch, I'm just going to steal it. I do that a lot too, I steal from previous panels. 
Now this boogie board is a situation where I feel like the base coat is probably too bright, so I might go back and add shadows in later. It's okay to go in and add shadows later. The basic principle is you start darkening work to light, but there's always times you're going to want to darken things up more or do whatever, and that's completely fine. And another reason why I don't mind not staying inside the lines perfectly is because I think, you know, in life, colors tend to have influence in each, in each other and they tend to bleed into each other. It's called refractive light, especially when they, two objects are touching. It's okay to get some of that color into it because you can use that later on to give your objects a little bit more depth and a sense of realism. It's kind of a cheat, but it works great. It's kind of a solid, very solid bodyboard. I might go and do that because water is translucent. Something like that. It's starting to come together. Looks like he's underwater. I'm just going to put in his skin base coat here. I'm usually rocking out to music right now if I'm just doing it my own. Yes, Joe's very pink. He's a beginner. He doesn't have his tan yet, but uh, he'll get it eventually. Start to kind of uh, build up the outer sort of shiny reflection of his wetsuit. Kind of has a nice shiny wetsuity look. Probably that's enough to call it good. You have to balance speed with. Uh, now we're thinking. I'm looking at this light source and it's like it's kind of coming from behind Joe, right? This is where I really have to think about what I want to do. And I already know that his skin base coat is probably not dark enough. I'm gonna take this lighter color that I use, build up the colors on the side of his face here a little bit, and then for a nice sort of vivid, take this sun color from uh, up here, and we're just gonna line his face on the side with it, kind of give it that Rembrandty feel a little bit. I don't know if you guys are into Rembrandt. And I might go with a darker color and because of the tones and stuff that I'm working with I think I want to go with a pretty desaturated color. Leaving a little bit of space in the back of the head and the ear. A little bit of color variance. Back to my base coat again. You know, we got to do the hands. Let's do the hands here. Again, taking that shiny sun color. Grab a shadow color and just darken this up a bit. Again, considering the form, you're always sort of considering the form of what you're painting, right? In this, uh, you know, you see this, it has sort of a wedge tip on this boogie board, so, and so I just want to accentuate that geometry, pulling my shadow down a little bit more, not starting it right up at the edge. That's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with the way this is going so far. Depending on what you want to do, and mouths are very difficult to get right. The inside of your mouth is like generally pretty dark, see? Uh, or there's a shadow base that goes in there. I might grab a little bit lighter color for the time. But also, this is where the sun's coming from the backside of his face. So if he opens his mouth, there, there may not be a whole lot of light hitting it. But you know, whatever. It's cartoons, right? So you have to weigh that, which is one enough to be believable. I always like to make his teeth pretty shiny. Okay, but it does look a little bit weird that they're like really, really bright here. The whites of eyes are rarely ever just super white unless you take some incredibly strong eye drops, which they sell in Japan. I like to do the eye highlight colors on the un underneath of the eye. It's interesting because, you know, you think highlights top, shadows bottom, but the way eye works, a lot of times the eyelash and the eyelid kind of covers up the top portion of your eye pupil, and so with the light that actually hits your eyes, always underneath. So it actually feels more right to have the bright part of your eye underneath instead of on top. I don't know. That's just my observation. I could be right or wrong about that. I'm sure it's in a textbook somewhere. You could line it like this at the bottom because you're... Uh, your eye's not round there, there's a little bit of a bump where the cornea, is that what it's called? Cornea? I want to say the cornea. Where the cornea meets the eye, there's like, it's actually a bump there. It's separate geometry, it's not a smooth, circular thing. Good, good. Happy, happy, happy. Super stoked about this. Now I'm just going to go in and finish up some of the water here. This is a really thin splash of water that's kind of shooting out underneath his arm and up into his armpit, getting it nice and clean there. So we might just sort of add that in and sort of color the droplets in as well. There we go. Ta-da! So Vajito sees a bit in the back. White suits are so interesting because they don't they don't really have a huge value range in terms of like light and shadow or mm, maybe that's not right. There's not a lot of mid-tones in a wetsuit. It's like dark and then it's like where the highlights are, where the sun hits it, it's like it's light. Especially when they're wet. It's really sort of one or the other. You're not really going to get a lot of mid-tones, which actually makes them pretty easy to color because you don't have to worry so much about all that stuff. You just kind of layer down, kind of leave some edges open for the highlights. Take into account form. Always take into account form. Hito himself is a bit more tan, so we'll just, we'll just give him a slight. It's not really uh, imperative that he's super awesomely painted. Just 
Uh, booyah. All right, almost done. Look at this panel. Beauty. Super stoked about how it's turning out so far. And I just forgot this. There's a little bit of ocean over here. Maybe there's a little, you know, there's, this is like where it meets the sand. There's a beach over there. Yes. I say yes. It's really nice and good. I just had an idea. I'm just going to take in a little bit of this yellow. Accentuate some of these water peaks here. Accentuate the peaks. Yes. All right. So now highlights. You usually want to be conservative with highlights, but this is water. Usually you just want to do these fairly conservatively. I'm not a conservative highlighter. I like to make it all look stupid and shiny. But you always got some super hot spots going on. All these droplets of water need highlights. For my painting, I use a more low opacity brush or something that can blend well. But with the highlights, I like something pretty firm that's just going to bink. Wetsuits are wet and shiny, so they need lots and lots of highlights. There might not be highlights in water under the board because of the shadows, but whatever. Actually, that's not true. I think water has highlights all the time. And these highlights really help your water pop. Boom. Ah, getting crazy with it. Look at that. It's like a Absolutely love it. One of my favorite parts of coloring, actually. Let's go in and just make everything super shiny. I want it to blind people with its shiny awesomeness. And we have ourselves a finished picture, more or less. Leonardo da Vinci once said that art is never finished, merely abandoned. As artists, we all know how difficult it is to finally just call whatever you're working on good. I could sit here and spend like another 12 hours on this picture until I get it absolutely right, but then I would not make my deadline of getting this page up tomorrow. So, I'm gonna have to call it a day. I think it looks pretty good. I think the thing is, is the more reps you get, the more work you put in, the more times you do it and you get used to creating stuff quickly, you get better at making good decisions on your first time around then you're not spending as much time noodling stuff because you have just done so much of it that you can kind of blaze through things and get it done and you can kind of see when is good enough for me this looks good enough and it only took me maybe an hour so that's pretty good I hope you liked this video and I hope it wasn't too long if you like please comment hit the like button or subscribe check out my comic surfer Joe www.surferjoecomic.com I'll leave a link in the description and also this software is metabank pro so I'll leave a link to that too. It's free to use and it's cross compatible with your tablets and it's got its own cloud service. It's actually really great. The brush I use, the watercolor brush, super smooth and so much fun to paint with. I recommend everybody give it a try. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully see you again. Mm. Cold.